In this tutorial I want to guide you step by step through the process of match moving in Blender in order to get a clean camera track and allow you to place 3D objects in your videos. Let's get started. Okay, so this right here is the clip that we're gonna use in this tutorial. You can download it with the link in the video description if you want to follow along with me. I simply shot this on my iPhone so you don't really need a fancy camera. You can simply shoot a video with your smartphone and this should already be enough. Okay, so let's get started and jump into Blender. Right here we want to open up a motion tracking workspace, so let's click on this plus button and on the VFX choose motion tracking. Now we can simply take our video clip and drag and drop it into the movie clip editor. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see this clip and I want to make this window a bit bigger as we're not going to use those two workspaces up here. Now first let's take a look at the footage settings. So right here you can see that we have a resolution of 3840 by 2160. So let's go to the output properties and also enter this here 3840 by 2160. Then next to it you can see that we have a clip of 30 fps. So we also want to adjust the frame rate to 30 fps in order to match with our clip. Then next you can see the length of this clip, so we have 385 frames. However, our timeline currently ends at frame 250. And the quickest way to adjust this is simply to go up here and click on set scene frames, which is automatically going to adjust it to 385 frames. And finally, if you take a close look, you can see that the colors are slightly off. In order to fix this, we can just switch the color space from sRGB to filmic sRGB. And now this should look better. So let's press N to close this side panel. Before we start tracking, we want to load the footage into memory in order to make working with it easier. So simply click on prefetch and you can see on this purple bar down here that this is loading the clip into memory. So once this is done, we can scrub through the timeline and simply take a look at our clip. Now to start tracking, let's go to the first frame and we want to adjust a few of the tracking settings. So first of all, I want to switch the motion model to a fine, which is what I use in most cases. And I also like to enable normalize, which is going to give me a bit more stable results. With this done, we can start placing our tracking markers. So you could either do this manually by zooming in and looking for points with a lot of contrast then hold down control and left click in order to place a tracking marker. You can scale it with S, rotate it with R and move it around with G. However, there is a way easier method. So let's press X to delete it. And instead, I simply want to click on detect features, which lets Blender automatically decide where there are points with high contrast that should work for tracking. So now we already have a lot of points and with all of them selected, we can simply click on this button, which is going to track them forward throughout the clip. Once we reach the end of our timeline, we can press H to hide all the current trackers and click on detect features again. So we now have a completely new set of features that we can track. Since we are on the last frame of the timeline, we want to track backwards. And so we are going to use this button right here. So now Blender is trying to follow all those points throughout the video from the end to the start. Alright, so with this done as well, we can again press H to hide all of them. Go into the middle of the clip and let's do the same thing again. Detect features. Let's first track them forwards. So now we have the second half of our clip tracked. Let's go back to the first frame where we place those trackers and also track them backwards. So now we should have more than enough tracking markers. So let's press Alt H to bring back all of them. And as you can see, if I scrub through the timeline, most of them seem to stick to the points in the video quite well. However, some points like this one, for example, seem to stick on quite well for some time. And then at some point they start to move around, which is going to fuck up our results. So let's fix this by deleting all the points that are not sticking on perfectly. So with this one selected, I'm going to press X to delete it. And it will be quite hard to find all the trackers that didn't really work in this view. So luckily we have this graph view down here. So let's open this up make it a bit bigger. And down here you can see that most of the trackers follow a certain pattern. 
However, some of them stick out, which usually are the points that didn't really follow along, like this one, for example. So let's just select them and delete them. So go through and try to clean this curve up as much as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to clean it up even more with some other tools later on. Okay, so I now deleted most of the bad points and the curve already looks a lot cleaner. Let's close this up and continue to solve the camera motion. But before we can do this, let's press N again to open up the side panel and add a bit more information about the camera I used to record this video. So let's go to the track settings and on the camera, we want to input the sensor width. Since I recorded this with my iPhone 14, we can input the sensor width of 5.6 millimeters. If you don't know this value for your camera, you can simply Google it and you'll find out what the sensor width for your camera is. And if you know the focal length, you can also open up those lens settings and enter the focal length. In this case, I don't know the exact value. So let's just go with 10 millimeters. And over here in the solve panel, enable refine focal length. So Blender will try to estimate and improve this focal length. So let's press N again to close this. And we can continue over here. The next thing we need to set is the keyframes A and B. For this, we need two keyframes between which the camera is moving a lot and we have a lot of parallax. So in this case, this could be frame 20 and 240. As you can see, the camera moves quite a lot between those two keyframes, but we still have a lot of trackers that are present both on frame 20 and on frame 240. So let's input this right here from frame 20 to 240. With this set up, we can do our first camera solve. So let's click on solve camera motion. This might take some time. However, once it is done, you can see the average solve error up here, which in this case is 0.92 pixels. Usually I'm happy with everything below an error of one pixel. So this is quite nice. However, I think we can improve this even more. So let's go to clean up and enable clean tracks. And if we open up this menu, I can clean everything that has a reprojection error of more than two pixels. So if I enter two in here, you can see that it selects all the tracking markers that have a solve error of more than two pixels. With them selected, I'm going to press X and delete all of them. So now with them removed, we can solve the camera motion again and we should get an even better result. And it actually worked. As you can see, we now have a solve error of 0.78 pixels, which is perfect for this case. So now that we have the 3D motion of our camera tracked, let's apply this to the camera that we have in the 3D workspace. So first of all, I want to delete the cube and the lamp as we're not going to use them anymore. And with the camera selected, go to the constraints and let's add in a camera solver constraint. And if I now scrub through the timeline, you can see that the camera is already moving in the same way as the camera did in the real world. We can see this even better if we go up to the viewport overlays and enable motion tracking. And down here we can also enable camera path. So now you can see all of the points that we tracked in this view over here represented in the 3D viewport. I think they are a bit too big, so let's decrease the size so we can see it a bit better. And over here, you can also see the path of the camera as I scrub through the timeline. Now, currently, you can see that all of this is just floating around in space. However, if you take a close look, you can see that this right here should be the ground uh, that we tracked right here. So this is the street. And those are all the points that are placed on the street. In order to make working with this easier, we want to align the street with the ground of our 3D world. In order to do this, there are some nice tools in the motion tracking workspace. So let's just select three points that are fixed on the ground. So I'm going to select those uh, three, hold down shift to select multiple points. And then under orientation, simply click on floor. And now Blender is automatically going to align those three points with the ground and you can see that the ground is now perfectly aligned with the ground in our scene. So if I press numpad zero, I can go into camera view and currently we can't see the footage in the background. So to fix this, go into the camera properties, enable background images, add image, go to movie clip and select the active clip. So now you can see the footage in the background. And if I scrub through this, you can see that our camera is tracked perfectly. So let's add in a 3D object. 
So I'm gonna go outside of the camera view, press shift A and bring in a cube. As you can see, this is currently going through the ground. So let's tab into edit mode, press G set to move it upwards. And I'm gonna press one to move it up exactly one unit. So tab out of edit mode. And if I go back into camera view, you can see that this cube is way too big. This should be two by two meters. However, it looks a lot bigger. This is because the scale of our world is off. So let's select the camera and switch the pivot point to the 3D cursor and also make sure that the position of the 3D cursor is reset to 0, 0, 0. So it is perfectly at the center of our scene. And then we can press S to scale this up and you can see that we are scaling the camera and all the points follow along. So from within the camera view, I'm gonna scale this up until the cube looks about two by two meters, which I think is the case right now. So I can switch back to the bounding box center, select the cube, maybe scale it down a bit and press G shift set to move it around the ground plane. And let's place it right here, R and set to rotate it along the set axis. And if I now scrub through the timeline, you can see that this cube seems to stick perfectly to the ground. So we have a really nice camera track right here. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you could learn something new. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section. Finally, I just quickly want to mention that you can get all the 3D models I create for free on Blender Kit. Just follow the link in the video description. All my assets are CC0 licensed, so you can use them for whatever you want. If you want even more high quality 3D assets, you can also get a 10% discount of a premium Blender Kit subscription with my link in the video description. Have fun creating!